Namaste. <laughs> one more video. This is really the last one. I promise. Last time, I didn't quite get to finish the thought that I was trying to get across. And so I want to take this one more video <laughs> and complete that thought because it's a very important one. And it'll be my final parting shot for quite some time. See, I'm here in the jungle. There's my meditation hut and the walkway going walking up and down. It's a beautiful morning. Just gorgeous. Incredible. Anyway, so <clears throat> what is the point? The point is enlightenment is not a thing that can be grasped or attained. Rather, enlightenment is simply the cessation of unenlightenment. See? We've created this artificial being. And because it's artificial, it's impermanent, unsatisfactory, and not our actual self. See? It's just like the world. So because of this, we're in suffering. And suffering is the result of a long chain of causes. And the beginning of that chain is ignorance. Because nobody ever told you this. And you weren't smart enough to figure it out. But that's okay. You'd have to be a Buddha to figure this out. <laughs> In fact, Buddha did figure this out. And so now we have the knowledge. That knowledge is called Paticca Samuppada, the law of dependent arising, or the law of conditioned co-arising, <laughs> or there's many different translations, but none of them actually do it justice. <clears throat> what is that law? Everything that is conditioned has a cause. When the cause arises, the effect arises. When the cause ceases, so does the effect. I'm going to sit down here so, so there's not so much distraction. So, hey, we talked before about a stick. And now as long as I'm up, I get a stick. How about a bamboo? Here's a nice bamboo leaf, huh? So this leaf has two ends. If I hold it like this, and it has the near end and the far end. So if I grasp the near end, huh? And I say, here, this is my bamboo. Now I want to throw away the far end. Huh? So I throw away the far end. Guess what happens? The near end goes away too. Why? Because they're connected. They're actually one thing. We call it the near end and the far end, but that's just words. What it really is, is one stick or one leaf. And when we throw one end, we throw the whole thing. So cause and effect is like that too. So the cause of suffering, the ultimate cause, is ignorance. We don't know. But since you're listening to these videos, now you know. Now you have no excuse. <laughs> what is the effect of ignorance? Ready? <laughs> sankara. 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 Not to be confused with Shankara, which is a name of Shiva. Sankara has its root in the word used to describe the makeup that an actor puts on. So here we are, pristine, pure awareness in our natural enlightened state. 
But what do we do? We put on all this makeup and all this other gunk <laughs> to play some character, some false character in a play or a movie. So, of course, this can't last. And when it disappears, we suffer. Pretty simple, huh? So, sankara are is variously translated preparations, fabrications, fermentations, but none of those really do it justice. Sankara is really the intention to assume a certain state of being, like a, like a character in a play. So, okay, here we are busily creating all these sankaras, and because of that, we create conditioned consciousness, Mm -hmm. Vijnana or Vijnana. Vijnana creates the six sense spheres sight, hearing, taste, smell, touch, and the mind. Those create contact. Contact creates grasping. Uh, grasping creates holding. Holding creates becoming, becoming creates birth, and birth creates death, suffering, disease, rebirth, and the whole mess. So that's the chain of causation. That the easiest way to uproot this chain is simply to stop creating sankara. Stop uh, aspiring to manifest some kind of being. Because you are already the perfect being. Huh? Well, why mess it up with all this other stuff? So now, the, the last time I got to the point where, okay, how do you do that? Well, you simply don't feed it. You don't feed it attention. When you discover a sankara, you simply observe it but you don't encourage it. Simply watch it until it fades away. Because, that's the other law of causation, everything that has a beginning has an end. Everything that arises also passes away. In other words, everything's temporary. So, let's say you're sitting meditating and a desire for sense pleasure arises. What do we do? Do we uh, go out and try to enjoy it? No. After all, we're in a monastery here in the middle of the jungle. <laughs> There's no McDonald's. <laughs> There's no little cat house nearby. <laughs> we're all alone out here with the, with the monkeys. <laughs> so what do we do? We just watch it from a distance. Don't give it any more attention than to just make sure it doesn't cause any trouble. And wait, and it will fade away. So I started talking about the different kinds of sankara. There are many. Actually, I did some research on it last night and this morning. First of all, there are the bodily needs. Hunger, thirst, sleep, shelter, I don't know, a little bit of companionship, or whatever it takes to keep the body healthy, uh, fit for self-realization. And it turns out these are fairly minimal. Huh? Just a little bit of food, a little bit of water, you know, a place to sleep, like that. Not much, really. Some clothes. Well, I try to avoid those as much as possible, but... <laughs> You know, the basics, basic, basic, basics. The life of a monk, the life of a sage is a very basic life. Materially speaking, they don't have a lot of possessions. They don't have a lot of needs. They just do the minimum to maintain the body. So <clears throat> that's how to deal with those sankhara. Now, over and above the minimum, that's considered sense pleasure. And we already covered that with the sense pleasure. You just watch it, 
and wait for it to go away. Because it will. They're unnecessary. You don't really need them. It's a fabrication. See? What's next? Dejection. The principal cause of dejection is not attaining enlightenment. Oh, I tried this meditation. Oh, I tried chanting this mantra. Or I tried this and that and it didn't work. So boo-hoo, woe is me. <laughs> I'm going to eat some worms and die. <laughs> Dejection. So all other kinds of depression, sadness, <clears throat> mental suffering and all caused by dejection, failure to attain self-realization. So how do we deal with that? We get knowledge from a realized teacher and we practice it until we get it to work. And when you get it right, it will work instantly. The Buddha's teaching, one of its attributes is akaliko. Akaliko means timeless, both in the sense of always true, past, present, and future, and in the sense of immediate. Huh? It has immediacy. Once you get it right, boom, you get the result. The result is cessation of conditioned consciousness. That's the result we're aiming for. Huh? Sankara nirodha, vijnana nirodho. Once the uh, preparations or uh, fermentations or <laughs> fabrications cease, then automatically the conditioned consciousness ceases as well. So what else is there? Cravings. That's the one I couldn't remember yesterday. Cravings mean habits. Like if you've ever had the misfortune of being addicted to, to tobacco and tried to quit. My God, what a craving. Ay, ay, ay. Now, obviously, nobody needs to smoke tobacco. Uh, it's no, it has no nutrition value whatsoever. It's a mental stimulant. That's why people like it. But it's also highly addictive. So when you try to stop it, you get cravings. And these are also in, in Sanskrit are called vasana. Vasana means a past uh, series of actions that created a habit. And now the habit is demanding satisfaction. How do you deal with it? Again, you just stop, watch it, and wait until it passes away. Don't feed it. Don't struggle against it. And the same goes with any kind of unwanted thoughts. Don't struggle with them. You simply make them more powerful by giving them attention. Just take note of them. Okay, there's a thought. You know, there's another thought. You know, there's a craving. There's a habit. There's a desire for sense pleasure. Da, 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 da. Now, what about the subtle sankhara? I mentioned yesterday the creation of I and mine, as discussed in the Mula Pariyaya Sutta. So uh, somebody asked for a link, and I, I gave them in the comments uh, the link. So look in the last video, uh, the, not the last, the second to the last one, in the comments, and you'll find a link there. Read it. The Buddha describes how we create the false I, the false ego, the illusory sense of an individual existence by labeling our perceptions mine. My seeing, my hearing, my smelling, my tasting, my touch, my thoughts, my mind. There is no mind. <laughs> There's only thoughts and thoughts and thoughts. So, again, simply stop creating those. Huh? Look into it. Look into yourself. Watch yourself. See how you do it. Huh? It's a magic trick. It's sleight of hand. Watch how you create this false sense of I. And just by bringing awareness into it, it will automatically cease. And then there's one more class 
of sankaras or fabrications. One time the Buddha was asked by a nun, Buddha, is the uh, Eightfold Noble Path a fabrication? Buddha said, yes. So all kinds of religion, philosophy, logic, history, scientific so-called knowledge, and so on and so forth, including the Buddha's teaching itself, are all this type of sankaras. They are to be utilized only to displace the unwanted sankaras. And when their mission is accomplished, they should also be given up. That's why the Buddha compared the Noble Eightfold Path to a raft. Once you get across the river, you don't keep dragging the raft around with you. You don't become obsessive compulsive about your raft. Uh, you drop it. So nobody who's actually enlightened is going around thinking, oh, I'm so enlightened. You know? <laughs> King of the forest. You know, <laughs> they're, not, they're not thinking like that. They just drop it. It's like when you have an itch and you scratch it and then it's done, it's gone, it's finished. You don't constantly keep itching it. You know? So when this work is done and the result is attained, conditioned consciousness goes away. Huh? Removing the cause, the sankharas, automatically removes the effect. So all the negative thoughts, all the nonsense, useless thoughts, all this stuff will go away automatically, without fighting with it, very important. Simply by bringing awareness into the creation of sankhara, you will gradually diminish them until they are gone. And then what do you do? <laughs> Nothing, just wait, <laughs> just wait. Because vasanas, huh? cravings and habits will come up from time to time when they get triggered and you're going to have to go back and just wait them out. Huh? Just observe, or just watch, recognize them for what they are, and let them pass. And that's really the work of meditation. And when that work is done, and you are free from sankharas, boom, the enlightenment hits. So this answers the question of what happened to me 35 years ago in Portland, Oregon when I attained first path? This is the question I've been trying to answer with all the research on this channel. And this is finally the answer. That somehow or other, just by good fortune or luck or whatever, I managed to create for a limited period of time a state of mind in which I was not creating sankhara. And because of that, the conditioned thinking stopped and that uncovered the original state, Nibbana. And that, of course, was wonderful. <laughs> As the Buddha said, uh, this is peaceful. This is excellent. The stilling of all fabrications. The relinquishment of all assets. The ending of all craving. Detachment. Cessation of material consciousness. Nibbana. So that's the end of this series. Aum Tatsat. Aum Harihi Aum.